Welcome to the interactive e-learning module on level measurement. Hi, my name is Stephanie, your guide to take you through this module. There is also a menu on the left-hand side of your screen and the control buttons on the bottom of the screen to help you navigate your way. So, you want to learn about level measurement? Well, grab your coffee and get ready. Whether you are new to level or just in need of a refresher, by the end of this module, you'll be an expert in the fundamentals of level measurement. Level measurement is the measuring and controlling of the level of a material contained in storage and process vessels, such as tanks, wells, reservoirs, ponds, bins, and hoppers. Simply put, level measurement tells you how much material is in a contained vessel by showing where the top is. It is the most common process measurement in industrial instrumentation. Opportunities for level measurement are everywhere, and Siemens has the technology to measure level on lots of different materials, from liquids to solids to slurries. Liquids generally have a flat surface to measure, as their viscosity and gravity even it out. Solids present a different surface, and generally pile at an angle to a peak. And then there are slurries, the in-between that can lie flat or peak depending on their gooey factor. Now that we've covered what kinds of materials we can measure, Henry's here to tell you more about why and how we measure level. Measuring level, however, is not as straightforward as it might first appear, and there are three distinct ways, actual, calculated, and density. Actual level measurement directly measures the material for which we want to know the level. One of the few technologies that measures actual level is capacitance. Calculated measurement indirectly measures level by calculating conditional factors. Technologies like ultrasonics, guided wave radar, and free air radar measure distance to the surface, not the level itself. But from that information, they can calculate level by subtracting that distance from the total empty distance of the container. Density is another indirect way to measure level. This applies to the gravimetric and hydrostatic technologies. Simply said, you use weight in gravimetric and head pressure in hydrostatic to find level. Please note that you must know the material density when calculating the vessel volume. Once that is complete, you are set for level calculation. Why don't we take a short break? I think Stephanie actually has some questions for you. All right, now let's take a moment to review some of the key terms that are often used when talking about level applications. There are two types of level applications, process control and inventory management. This factor must always be considered first when selecting the correct device for a level application because their goals are very different. Process control monitors a continuous product cycle where things are really happening. For example, there can be cooking or the addition of different liquids and even a vigorous blending. Levels often change rapidly so devices have more stringent requirements. Measurements are frequently under less than ideal conditions, including very high temperature or pressure, and there may be agitation or even a chemical reaction. Inventory management monitors product and storage conditions. The material can be a finished product or a component within a process. Inventory management is a lot simpler process condition, but it does require a far greater accuracy than do process vessels. Inventory, after all, cost money. And small level changes can translate into large amounts of cash. Cash which is best left in the customer's pocket. There are also two types of level measurement within any application. Point and continuous level. And they often go together as part of a complete level solution. Where there's a requirement for one, the other provides important backup control. Point level measurement often acts as a switch or an alarm. 
When the level meets a certain point in the tank, it just switches on and off. Simple, really. Continuous level measurement measures a full trend over time and throughout the tank range. Please note that point level backup control is an important component in these applications. Now, let's go inside the application where the devices actually work. Contact devices directly touch the material. Just be aware of these conditions that can affect contact devices. Chemical compatibility with the devices, material that can follow the mechanics, and buildup that affects contact sensitivity. Non-contact devices do not touch the material. Measurements can be calculated by weight with sensors on the outside of the tank, like gravimetric technology. Or, level is determined by devices using time-of-flight calculations within the tank, but never touching the material. These include radar and ultrasonics. Either way, the technology has no influence on the material at all. However, the material can influence non-contacting technology. Certain environmental and material conditions still need to be considered, like atmospheric conditions or chemical compatibility in pressure and temperature. A material's dielectric constant, or dK, is important for radar devices. Electromagnetic waves reflect better for material with a higher dK. The higher the dK, the better the reflection, and then the more accurate the measurement. Have you ever microwaved a bowl of soup only to find the bowl scorching hot while the soup stays lukewarm? That's because the bowl is made out of a high dK material, so it reflects the electromagnetic waves instead of the soup. If you use plastic or glass bowls with decays lower than the soup, you'll never have a cold lunch again. The last term is interface. It refers to the point where two distinct materials meet and interact. Sometimes in one vessel, you will have two liquids of different densities creating a layered effect like this one. Interface level measurement is one of the most challenging level measurement applications. However, Contact technologies like guided wave radar and capacitance are well suited to deal with these conditions. Let's take a moment now. I think Stephanie has some questions. Congratulations! You've just completed part one of our level measurement series. Now that you know the fundamentals of level, you are ready to move on to part two. In the second module, you will be given an overview of our level technologies. You can also visit our website to learn more about our entire level portfolio at siemens.com forward slash level. You can also download the attached level guide for more information. At Siemens, we have the right technology for the right application. For more e-learning modules like these, please visit siemens.com forward slash pi e-learning and click on interactive modules. And if any of our e-learning modules pique your curiosity and you would like to learn more, then we invite you to come visit one of our training centers at any of these locations. Our in-depth courses include hands-on training from application specialists. You'll get to play with actual PI instruments and learn about them in more detail. For both introductory and advanced training, go to Siemens.com forward slash PI dash training and register now. Want to learn more? Check out the following Siemens books. Available on Click for Business or through your local Siemens distributor. This e-learning module is not only viewable on your computer, but on your mobile devices too. All major mobile devices are supported, including Apple, Android, Blackberry, and more. BrainShark even offers an app for Apple users and an app for Android users for a more interactive mobile presentation. So get mobile. Level measurement is the most common process measurement in industrial instrumentation. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about the fundamentals of level measurement. Thanks for watching and see you soon in part two.